You know how Spider-Man has rogue gallery characters that he fights all the time, but he holds back because he has good morals? The Lizard is one of those beings where the Spider-Man can't afford to pull his punches against or it's going to be his downfall. So yeah, respect him. He can fight a going all out Spider-Man. You guys might know about Dr. Kirk Connors, the Lizard, but he's actually smarter than you would think. We, even without counting the Lizard strength and speed and all that lizardy stuff, him and Spider-Man have worked time to time to help make cures. Like in the time he helped Aunt May get cured from her irradiated blood, helped Spider-Man to make something to help dissolve rhino's impenetrable armor and yeah it did work that's some smart stuff using his brain to synthesize a potion of the fountain of youth <laughs> just like that he's actually the reason spider-man got rid of his six arm affliction bullcrap can test to see if you're a clone or not when it comes to spider-centric type characters like the lizard off of default it's easy to respect him because hey he's a threat for spider-man level beings right and it's not via hacks it's just straight with raw strength and a lot of different properties of them imagine being a combat medic you're the guy that helps out soldiers on the front line but then, uh, then something tragic happens and your arm gets jacked up. Couldn't do his job properly no more. So he basically became obsessed with getting that arm back and regrowing it at all costs, doing a whole bunch of research, formulas. And thanks to all this research, he actually became successful creating a formula to get his arm back. But the big catch is that getting his arm back, he became a lizard in the process. Marvel pretty much gives you an explanation of his life here. We already know he has superhuman strength, speed, regeneration. Lizard even made a drug to make other folks lizard-like so they can follow his command and stuff like that, which I'm going to talk about later on. Dr. Connors went through some interesting evolutions. Like, he has, like, literally a berserker mode to where he kind of loses all logic. Lizard mode, but then he has other relaxed modes that are still technically pretty savage still, but not as animalistic as this. And a lot of this is due to the different evolutions that he has had to go through. Like the fact he's been bit by Morbius, a vampire. Part of his evolution is thanks to him becoming more cunning and not just more savage. Improvements. The lizard is like a separate psyche from him to the point where he made them think that the lizard was cured out of his system when he really wasn't. He had to blend in in order to survive his environment because he knew he was outnumbered. Spider-Man, Morbius, blah, blah, blah. So no matter if we're talking about Kurt Connors, the lizard or Kurt Connor, the different personas, both of them are just pretty freaking smart, one could say. To the point where he's smart enough to kind of understand how Spider-Man's spider sense works, so he has to be on edge and not act up. Along with his intellect being improved, all his normal stats got increased. Like he's literally gotten stronger physically and stuff throughout the year, making formula improvements and stuff. Because there was a time where he literally couldn't turn into the lizard and had to blend into his environment. He had to figure out what was the real issue. He finally did. The formula fixed it. Stuff like this, where he had to figure out how to get around a situation like this. Which is why later on in this video, you're going to see him looking different and stuff. He's, you know, some of these panels are going to be him evolved and not evolved, blah, blah, blah. Different progressions over the years. You get it? So when you see panels like this later on in the video, he's definitely stronger than he usually would be. This is why you see him giving Spiderman a run for the money. Straight faster and stronger. So he has went through power progression over the years. The lizard had some interesting abilities when he was a lizard, like being able to command other lizard crocodile family type of stuff. Like in this case with Spider-Man summoning some reptile, Spidey. Same with man thing. It's like telepathy telling them what to do. Hey, reptiles attack Spider-Man like bruh. Let me command a whole bunch of crocodiles to fight with me. They explained it with some science. Under my influence, Connors developed new versions of the serum, unleashing inhibitions and making the victim susceptible to my command. Like this is some scientific type stuff to kind of control folk and gives off a pheromone in humans will by default make them more violent. This guy even said, let me make a whole bunch of people turn into savage animals because of telepathy, apparently, by activating their lizard brain. Making people crazy. Commands a crowd to attack Spider-Man. Making folks go berserk. This weird ability is explained right here about how people are just getting controlled like this. When it comes to talking about the lizard, they say, Nowadays, lizard's proximity brings out the brain's primitive reptilian instincts. In other words, when he's near you, you get impulsive. You follow base urges. Your ID kicks your super ego in the face. Spider-Man basically explains thanks to this little aura he gives off. Characters like Dr. Octopus kind of get stupid because their base impulses are kind of pushed to the side. I mean, your logic kind of gets pushed to the side. You just kind of start acting like wow. But how exactly strong is the lizard though? He's always usually lizard form when he does physical impressive things. But sometimes when he's like almost in the process of powering up, he can do superhuman stuff. Like for example, he's not in lizard mode, but he's still able to dodge a vampire tier attack like Morbius. Spider-Man has issues reacting to blizzards from Morbius. He's actually strong enough. The hold characters like Beast down. He's not afraid to use his tail in combat to restrain you. Strong enough to rip up a concrete beam and throw it. Even entities that's made of his DNA, he can mess their neck up. He can tear steel door off his hinges like cardboard. Of course, he can sling cards. Same with throwing bulldozers. 
Poor snakes never stood a chance. Crocodile, poor jaws for the crocodiles. I feel bad for them because they get pulled apart. Hey, car, I'm going to flip you on your side. Let me just pick up these motorcycles and sling them in the opposite direction. And he's strong for his size because even if you're bigger, he will still manhandle you. In this occasion, he broke Man-Thing's grip, tearing apart ships and slinging it at Johnny Storm, ripping pieces of buildings off and throwing it. The best way to get an understanding of his strength is his occasion with Spider-Man because he's a spider century character. Spider-Man has a hard time getting out of his vice grip of his tail, getting slung like that. It's like an extra limb, one could say. Flipping cars like toys, forever ripping metal off the roofs of stuff, bending the rail off the railroad track, tears the door off a safe. Forever throwing big stuff at Spider-Man. Forever breaking out of Spider-Man's web more than once. With his tail, he can break a tree trunk with the striking power. Tears a tree and like this. He's actually went through evolutions where his appearance might actually change a bit. Tears himself out of some webbing. Bursting through walls. Man handles beings related to Kraven. Another metal door. No hinges for you. Many fights with Spider-Man and craters the ground. When the lizard claimed that he is stronger than Spider-Man, he said, Man, he's right. Spider-Man even went as far as saying his strength is unbelievable. I mean, this kind of makes sense with the million times they fought and the fact that his tail can severely harm him. Spider-Man actually needs to actually not pull his punches against him. When it comes to raw strength, I've always considered the vampire and spider family symbiote tears to be around the same range when it comes to strength. And it's kind of proven when the occasion you see the lizard battle with vampires like Morbius. It kind of matches up with the lore and how vampire tears like Morbius always give Spider-Man issues and etc. I mean, even when Spider-Man had the black suit, aka one could say symbiote Spider-Man, Lizard was still considered a strong being, saying too powerful. It doesn't help the fact that Lizard gets stronger over the years as time went by in comic lore. On top of all this, man, Spider-Man makes his improvements too, though. It's stated he's starting to break Iceman's ice blocks. He can collapse portions of a street. Stop being in denial. Lizard is stated to be as strong as Spider-Man. Huge logs like this he can talk. Tackle the falling thick tree, and you can see how big it is. So we know overall we can say he's definitely a Spider-Man level being and Spider-Man has feats of like apparently supporting over thousands of tons like that supporting building feet like in my Spider-Man previous video. Spider-Man has feats of lifting over 60 tons or even 100 tons. Folks have calculated feats such as this that means lizards should be within that ballpark too. Spider-Man has too many feats like this over the years. Tanks are bare minimum 60 tons or if you're in a low ball even further 30 tons. He's even lifted up train. If we're to take Spider-Man having the strength to support a piece of the weight of the Daily Bugle, and considering that the Daily Bugle has an approximate weight, of course we don't know the exact weight, it has an approximate weight of over hundreds of thousands or five hundred thousands of tons, and it's literally confirmed that the Lizard is as strong as Spider-Man or stronger, the Lizard has to be within this ballpark of range to match Spider-Man consistently like this, even on going all out Spider-Man. Can't say he's holding back. It's fair to say that there's no way that Spider-Man supported the entire weight of the building because it had pillars supporting it and it was tilting over it doesn't matter one hundredth of the weight of a hundred five hundred thousands of tons is still thousands of tons so it's like no matter how you slice it if you want to take this feat seriously the lizard is confirmed throughout this video to be in that range of power he just got to be that strong i mean you already got to worry about his blunt punches but then if you have the blunt raw power with piercing damage that makes it even worse like he's done this to ben Rayleigh, cutting stone tearing up concrete as guardian type characters even cutting them with his blades like enchantress he can use it for climbing like going up a brick wall with his claw he uses it to cut spider-man can cut pipes with the claws the vampire tears get cut too and we're not going to talk about him actually using his bites because that's just another excuse to have piercing damage he can damage spider family member people or or he can just eat people up yeah he gets gruesome especially if he gets to the point where he ain't got his own mind he looks more and more like a dinosaur. Of course, fighting Spider-Man, he has to be pretty freaking fast. I mean, characters like Johnny Storm have a hard time hitting him. The Prowler gets intercepted with a tail whip by him. He's plenty of times dodged Spider-Man to show his fighting speed and agility and stuff and then, and then counters. He's not afraid to blitz beings even if they're all the way down the hallway. Avoiding blasts from Johnny Storm. Stuff that you don't pay attention to. He kind of blitzed Enchantress before she had time to teleport. It's implied that he's too fast to the point where even when Spider-Man has his spider scent, activated he's just too powerful and fast i guess and you ain't gonna beat him even if you get a head start even if you're on a vehicle necessarily it's just proven when it comes to his speed against spider-man he's not one of those glass cannon type of characters because he's durable as heck there's even times where spider-man hurts his hands hitting him so he lets you know he's in that tier no it's not just a one-time thing spider-man's even stated that it feels like he's fractured every knuckle because of punching lizard he says it's like hitting a stone wall it's kind of scary to think about considering a spy man can punch through steel bro spy man's one of those characters that one can argue can lift over thousands of tons and for 
him to say this about the lizard is impressive. He even stated yet again, it's like punching a steel wall. His body can withstand long falls. And if you do damage him, he can technically regenerate, which I'm going to show you in a bit. But Spider-Man holds back against the, he holds back about against some of his opponents, but characters like the lizard, Spider-Man can actually cut loose against. There's even a case where Spider-Man says, I'm literally going to end you and picks up stuff like this against him. Like he's like tired of his crap. Spider-Man's fighting serious against him. I mean, he's always getting hit hard enough to crack concrete and gets back up afterward. He's even taking punches from Wolverine, of course, when Wolverine wasn't necessarily using his claws right here. Yeah, Spider-Man holds back a lot, but there is a lot of occasions where there's occasions like with the lizard, where the lizard and Spider-Man go at it head to head. And it's a very, very, extremely seriously high difficulty type of fight. We talking about weapons being involved, bladed things being involved and everything. I'm talking outfits getting messed up. I'm talking about Morbius coming in to try to help. And then he hits Morbius and then they teaming up on him. It's just getting real. They work together to take him on, take him down. And he's took straight on punches like this from Spider-Man. And it's just like, what are you doing? Well, standing attacks from Doc Ock, other rogues gallery Spider-Man type characters that are underrated. One thing that's different from him and Spider-Man is that he's actually withstood bullets. Like, I'm not talking about they actually pierce him, but he just heals real fast. I'm talking about they literally bounce off of him. Even early days, I'm talking about shotgun blasts too. His regeneration is absurd, like being stabbed through the brain. Still doesn't necessarily get killed. He might get knocked out or something, but not killed. There's little moments like this that a lot of people don't pay attention to being resistant to some form of heat even when johnny's being flamed on it doesn't really seem to do damage to him based on the heat and the lizard reacts to him resistant to other things like electricity but not immune of course yeah i want to make something clear he's very strong and durable but he's not indestructible or nothing characters like man thing can mess him up badly wolverine when he decides to use his claws can actually cut off his tail and damage him real bad and wolverine can cut anybody so and he's even gotten cut by black cat her claw somebody that's also spider centric he's been knocked out by electrocution even fried by higher tiers like Enchantress. But here's the thing, it's possible to knock him out and it's possible to get a W, but the thing about it is that his regeneration is pretty absurd. Literally like a lizard can like literally regrow his arm. There was this time when he was in human form, of course, he had to get this adamantium inhibitor out. It was attached to spinal cord and removing it would sever the spine. They thought he'd die. It's suicide, but they say in lizard form, he can regenerate and heal. The lizard is something to not be trifled with when it comes to regeneration. And they did it. But he was able to heal. He's regrown his tail. Same goes for his eyes. One of his main weakness, I will admit, has to be like cold, one could say. He's been incapacitated by cold substances or just elemental stuff that has enough juice behind it. Even electricity will work sometimes. I mean, if it wasn't a weakness, Spider-Man literally used him to get in a refrigerator to help incapacitate him to get a W that way. Yeah, but these are all the different beings that has had lizard powers over the years. How strong is Iguana? Another lizard entity literally gained lizard powers as well. Confirmed he has all the lizard's powers. And he's impenetrable to firearm, tears through fences. How strong was Spider Lizard? Yeah, bullets balance off a of Spider Lizard. Strong enough to flip cars, pushes over water tower. For those curious, this is how he actually gained lizard-like abilities. <laughs> Spider-Man absorbed radioactive feedback from a portable innovator that rays affected his blood. Lizard beings like this, they're always strong enough to fight spider family members, cratering a wall. These beings are technically nowhere near the level of strength of a fully lizard up being, and they're just the result of a drug-enhanced lizard type stuff, but they're still strong enough to push Spider-Man against the wall like that, though, but they're no match, though. Then you got entities like this who are affected with a bio-regenerative formula, they're strong enough and fast enough to attack Spidey. Other beings like this that had his power has regenerative ability that allows them to survive being shot in the head. Anything he can do, the lizard should be able to withstand too. And is straight up tickled by gunfire. Rips the roof off a van, different forms, punches through layers of scrap, lifts cars and throws them at Spider-Man, technically still Lizard Man, picks up a girder and swings it around, stuff that lizard should be able to do. Just lizard people in general were strong as crap. It lets you know how dangerous the lizard is himself. They can punch Emma Frost and restrain her. It lets you know beings that are not even necessarily the lizard himself can do. And when it comes to his fighting speed, he has to be ridiculously fast to hang with Spider-Man throughout the years. And Spider-Man can't just avoid every attack. Considering that Spider-Man has spider sense and the fact that the lizard still can keep up with him like I showed in this video. And beings that have the speed of light on their side can't just tag spider-man when they feel like it the lizard has to be in these ranges of massively way faster than bullets and stuff when it comes to reflexes and stuff lightning blah 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 spider centric stuff but all that could be just me i want to hear what you guys think how strong do you think lizard is did you think he was this crazy yeah he's pretty strong he's a spider-man villain for a reason what do you guys think before i get going thanks for the donations folks it helps out a lot respect lizard I'm glad you are enjoying your time on the channel. Make sure you check out the playlist on the channel to see other How Strong videos. If you like what this channel is offering, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys later.